Welcome everyone. My name is Sebastian Weber. I'm working for, as biostatistician for Novartis Pharma in Basel. And today I would like to introduce to you the R Bayesian Evidence Synthesis Tools R package for which I'm the main developer. So R Best has been designed for applications in drug development. And the primary application uh, when we wrote the package for, for, was for the use of historical control data from past clinical trials for the purpose of using it for future clinical trials with the aim to reduce the sample size in the control group while maintaining statistical power. But now we see that there are various further applications in drug development as you see listed here. So the workflow we have in mind when now using RVEST for designing a new study is that you would first which would be outside of the domain of the software, assess historical control data for relevance for your new study. So you would look at the historical data, um, assess its extendability assumption essentially from a model perspective, which uh, comes down to asking questions around population similarity of the historical um, um, data which you have in terms of enrollment criteria and um, things like this. This will then be translated into your assumptions on the between trial heterogeneity of the model. Then, once you have the, compiled the data set and made this assessment, you can run the analysis to obtain an informative prior in parametric form, which you do with our best with the GMAP command to analyze the historical data using MCMC. Then the MCMC result is approximated with a parametric density using the auto mix fit function and finally, we strongly recommend to robustify the so obtained um, in, informative map prior. Now that we have our map prior, our best aims to support you in evaluating the frequentist design properties when you were to analyze such a trial. Uh, um, and for that, the OC1S and OC2S function are available. Finally, Arbest can also support you in running the final um, file an analysis with a postmix um, command. I will discuss the example of the introductory vignette on a binary endpoint, which is in the indication of ankylosing spondylitis, published in The Lancet in 2013. This uh, was a Novartis sponsored trial. Of a, which is a double blinded proof of concept study to test the coquinomab against placebo. The endpoint is a binary response of ASAS20 at week six, so higher response rates are better. The design was fully Bayesian, and the success criteria de defined was that we wanted to see that at least with 95% probability, the response rate in the active group exceeds the response rate in the placebo group. For the placebo group, a meta-analytic predictive um, prior was used, as you see here, and for the active group and uh, prior um, without any uh, contributing any information to the analysis was used. The historical data, which has been used to um, formulate the map prior you see on the right, and the randomization ratio, um, put forward in the tri trial was four to one. So 24 patients were put on active and only six on placebo. When you load the RBEST package, then you have immediately available the data set, set AS, which is analyzed in, in, in this example. So you see each row of the data set contains the summary data of um, the historical study and uh, reported here is the number of patients in the control group and the number of responders in the control group. Overall, this data set consists of more than 500 patients of historical uh, data. In our best, we've implemented the generalized meta-analytic predictive model, which is a hierarchical model to obtain the predictive of the mean parameter of a new study. So let Y be the control group summary data for age historical trials. Then the data of each um, historical study is modeled with the likelihood F and um, a trial specific um, control parameter 
beta h. The same model holds true for the future study for which you don't yet have the data in your hand. You can think of this data being essentially missing in the context of this model. And we denote the parameters of the future study with a star here. Now we have many different control parameters and we now put forward the exchangeability assumption, namely we transform each theta with a, a link function g to a link scale where we then put forward that these different parameters are coming all from a common normal distribution with a population mean beta and a between trihelogeneity tau. So our best supports the canonical um, combinations of um, likelihood and link functions, namely uh, a binomial likelihood and locket link, a normal um, likelihood with a known standard deviation and an identity link, and um, the Poisson likelihood with a lock link. For the um, population mean parameter beta, a prior is required. Um, but the most important prior actually of this model is the prior which you um, put on the between trilateral 90 parameter tau. Because in most cases, we will, may only have actually three or even only two studies to run this analysis. And in that case, um, the prior which we put on the between trilateral 90 parameter becomes relatively important. For that, and how to do that, I refer you to the documentation of the GMAP command in RBEST. The parameter tau is very important in this model, since whenever this parameter approaches zero, then the model will essentially pull the available information and we get an unbound use of the historical data. Whenever tau approaches very large values, the model will essentially stratify the data and there would be no use of the historical data for any future study. So the evidence synthesis in our best is done with the GMAP command. And here you see an example of how you could analyze this data set. And um, we recommend then once you've done the MCMC analysis to also plot the results with this command, for example. And here then you see the um, model estimates in comparison to the stratified estimates from each study. So the dashed lines is the stratified estimates and the model estimates are the solid uh, depicted here in the solid um, um, lines. The solid lines are always shrunk towards the overall population mean, which is denoted here in the middle. And these also have very much a lot shorter um, credible intervals as these benefit from the information from all the other studies through the model. But the key part really at the result of this analysis is for one the population mean estimate which is a typical response rate estimate but what's more interesting is the map uh, estimate which includes in addition to the um, uncertainty in the estimation of the population mean, the between trial heterogeneity such that we have a much wider um, credible interval here. Now the analysis result is at this stage an MCMC sample for which you see here the histogram of the four chains being run by default. But this is still at this current stage very inconvenient to communicate or communicate or pre-specify in a protocol so we need now a parametric approximation to be able to say exactly what is our prior for the new study. And this is what Arbest um, can also do well in that it um, provides um, conjugate mixture priors which can be fit to these MCMC results. So why do we use mixture priors? Well, you obviously see if you were only to use a single beta um, prior, which you can moment match to the MCMC um, sample, which you get, then that's a very inaccurate description of the MCMC um, result. Whereas if you use two component beta mixture prior, then this is already becoming relatively accurate. And if you use three component beta mixtures prior, it's uh, essentially it's the same information and using even four components wouldn't add any additional um, accuracy here. So once you have now this parametric prior in your hand, Arbest supports you in evaluating the trial design. 
So the idea is that the informative map prior enables unequal randomization by substituting sample types of the control um, group by this prior information. So the trial power is maintained at the reduced sample size in the control group due to the use of the informative um, prior in the final analysis. So the way you would go about this is you would to use first frequentist design, design principles to determine your starting n, which you could conclude for the ankylosing spondylitis example to be around about 24 patients are needed per group. And then the question becomes like, how much can we now reduce the control group n here by using the informative prior? And for that, our best um, supports the concept of the effective sample size, which is a measure of informativeness of, of your prior. And these things like summarizing um, the MCMC result from GMAP into a parametric form and then as calculating the effective sample size are done by just two lines of code using our best. We see that we have an effective sample size of 39, which is a lot less than the more than 500 patients we started with, but still a lot of information in comparison that um, we only need 24 for the control group if you were to use Quentus design without any informative prior. And next, RBEST allows you to now compare the operating characteristics of various designs in a um, very straightforward way. So that is um, our best calculates things um, behind the scenes analytically and as such very fast and accurately. So you can even instead of looking at tables, what would be typically common uh, when you do this uh, operating characteristics calculation, you can even use graphs. Um, and you can compare the different designs. So when using no prior, you would see that um, a type one error here, which is the frequency for go whenever the um, response rates are exactly the same in both groups. Um, for the flat prior here, which stays below the 5%, and for the when you use the map prior for the control group, you see that the type one error increases a lot. Um, uh, as we move away from what we expect from the prior to see. So remember in the um, historical um, data, we saw a um, response rate of around 25%. And whenever we see a control group in the future of a response rate of more than 40%, then of course the prior will drag the posterior in the direction of what um, we have seen in the past and as such, lead with a certain chance to a go decision in spite of that the two rates are the same. And the robust map is always a compromise between the two. Now, um, the type one error is, so to say, the risk of using this approach, whereas the power is the frequency for go whenever there's a true difference between the two groups. This is, so to say, the gain in, 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 um, when using this approach. As we can see when we compare that at a given delta difference between the two response rates, the using no informative prior has much lower power in comparison to using the informative priors. And the robust map um, is always a compromise between the two um, priors of flat and map. Brings me to the summary of this. So um, our best facilitates the application of the meta-analytic predictive approach in clinical trials. It supports binary endpoints, normal endpoints, and Poisson endpoints, and via a Poisson approximation um, can also support time to event data using a piecewise constant formulation. Arbes tries to make these complex computation um, easy and straightforward for um, users, where as main user we have a trial substitution in our mind. And by now there is a public package homepage for where users can provide feedback and interact with developers on GitHub. And here you also um, can find more details on the package details in the Journal of Statistical um, Software um, publication. With that I'd like to thank for your attention and hope to hear from you soon. Bye.